Every year of every day, thousands of people fall victim to FWP. I'm so cold. I'm starving. Nobody cares about me. Also known as first world problems. I am so cold. Somebody set the AC to 72. I need it at 73. I'm starving. Oh yeah, has leftovers. Nobody cares about me. Nobody commented or liked my status. Hi, I'm Ryan Higa, and for just five hours of attention a day, you could help somebody with FWP. Everyone keeps putting so much pressure on me. I don't know what I want for my birthday. I have too much chips for my dip. If I open a new dip, I'll have too much dip for my chips. Why does Apple keep making new iPhones? Now I have to get another one? They've been through so much struggle. The remote's over there, but I'm all the way over here. So much hardship. My iPhone 5 is too big for my skinny jeans. So much attention. I poured my cereal without checking to see if we had milk. We did it. So please, show your support and send them this video. And show them how much we care about their FWPs. I bought too many groceries. Now I'll have to make two trips. All you have to do is call the URL, 1-800.org. And we'll send you the FWP helping kit, which includes a bridge, a straw, and a full cup with a cover. Here's a bridge. Now get over it. Here's a straw. Now suck it up. Here's a full cup. Now shut the full cup. With your help, we can put an end to FWPs and focus on the real problems, like starving children or homeless people. Because if you're complaining about something as silly as the iPhone 5, just wait till you see the iPhone 6. Oh, this? This is the iPhone 5S. This is the iPhone 6. Is it? Okay. All right. So I want to welcome Ryan Higa to the stage. Um, Hello. Yeah, welcome. A um, uh, little backstory. My son, uh, who's uh, 13, um, was continually watching videos. And I was getting um, frustrated with him by all the videos he was watching. I'm like, Navar, will you stop watching that? And then finally, I just changed my approach. I'm like, what is it that you're watching that's so entertaining? And that's how I discovered Ryan. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm like, how, do you made these creative videos that like grab kids' attention. And I'm like, I, we need to know some of his magic and some of his uh, wisdom and some of his experience. So uh, we're going to come here to talk a little bit about social media, about creativity, about um, understanding the younger generation. Uh, Ryan is a super humble dude, so I'm going to push him a little bit. <laughs> um, and I know, Ryan, you started doing uh, videos nine years ago um, before yep. there was even the possibility, it looked like, of making a living at doing yep. YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, but you did them because of... Your uh, it was just, I mean, I grew up in uh, Hawaii, in Hilo, which is on the big island if anybody's ever been to Hawaii. Uh, so basically, if you've been to Hawaii, you know that there's nothing to do. I mean, <laughs> granted, you guys live here, I'm assuming. So like, if you go, you want to go there. But when you grow up there, you don't want to be there. There's nothing to do at all. So for me, fun was... Just beaches and volcanoes. But and, you see that all yeah. the time. So like, you don't want to go to the beach. You, know, like, you can only go to the beach so much. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true when you live there. But uh, yeah, I mean, for me, fun was like picking up a camcorder and doing something creative with it. I think the very first thing I ever made was at a family reunion, and it, I just got handed the camcorder, mm. and I just put it on the table and did Life of an Ant, basically. <laughs> and I thought, that was, I thought that was fun. So from there, I think it just, you know, I just did it out of pure boredom and just fun. Got it, got it. But there was a point where you were going to college, and you were getting more and more excited about videos. And I'm sure you're a good Asian kid who wants to <laughs> like, like, keep the family happy. But you had to tell your parents that you're leaving college to create videos. Right. How was that? I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, um, it's a tough thing to tell your parents, let alone your Asian parents, right. uh, that you're, you want to leave college for this hobby 
that you were doing. Fortunately, it was right around the time where I discovered that YouTube had this uh, partnership program where you can get paid. Uh, it's, it was still a risk, because at the time, you know, it was, I think it was 2008, uh, it could have been the next MySpace where you, it, was, it didn't exist. Sorry if there's any MySpace people. <laughs> um, you know, so it was still a risk, but once I told them that I fully wanted to do this and I wanted to commit to this, they were 100% um, supportive. Well, how did you know? How did you, was it just this calling or this how did I know what? How did you know that it was like this, this was like your artwork? This was like your path? Well, I mean, I, I enjoyed doing it. I, even when I was in college, I was still trying to do it, but I don't think people realize the time that goes into it. So I was actually trying to spread, I was spreading myself too thin. I was um, trying to do YouTube and college and I was failing at both, I feel like. So that was kind of like my decision basically. It's just I had to pick. And I was actually studying nuclear medicine. So wow. yeah, <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little different <laughs> from yeah. what um, I do now. So uh, I just realized I just, I hate doing this. So what's the point, you know? Right, got it. I mean, you hear that all the time and just do what you love. And yeah. um, fortunately what I love started to pay, so. Got it, got it. Yeah. So yeah, I wanna, so you have 16 million subscribers on YouTube, which if you were a country, you'd be the 69th biggest in the world, <laughs> above Zambia and Cambodia. Um, so how does it feel to have all those people want to see what you do? Is it exciting, is it pressure, is it, are you planning to take over other countries? Like, what is the? <laughs> I mean, it is, it is. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's so different because when you say that, it sounds so much like so much more than it is. But um, you know, it doesn't feel real sometimes because you know we do the same thing, and you're like, oh, another we put out a video, got a million views, oh, right. two million views. Right. Uh, but you don't really realize that those are real people. I feel like so for me, it's it's until you like in a scenario like this, where how many I don't know how many people this is. There's like well, three thousand at the conference. Yeah, so like this is all, this is three thousand, which is it looks like an a, incredible amount. Um, but that's in YouTube numbers is nothing, right. you know? So it, it feels, um, I guess when I'm sitting here, it feels crazy, but behind the camera and behind the, behind the uh, video, it just, I don't really notice it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so a lot of your uh, audience is younger generation, uh, and there's a lot of parents, people here who are trying to understand the younger generation and who feel perplexed. <laughs> Talk to your kids. The uh, you have found a way of engaging kids and grabbing their attention and entertaining them. Uh, do you have any insights for some of us who are trying to better understand the young people in our life? I mean, you just got to be more immature, I guess. <laughs> like, I have a very immature sense of humor, so I think I appeal to a younger audience. Uh, uh, immature being silly, goofy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not just that, too. I think there is, like, kids are getting smarter and smarter and growing up faster these days because of the internet. And I think, for me, I always try to incorporate some kind of message within the video, even though, like, First World Problems, that video you saw was, uh, you know, it's comedic, but it's also a message behind it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a little different take on that message, mm -hmm. but um, that's kind of what I try to do with, with my videos. Right, right, right. And so is that something you intentionally do. So for those of you who haven't checked out all of his videos, not, not everyone has a message, but there's often a message that's yeah. coming through, like annoying friends, where right. you watch it and then you turn to the viewer and say, are you one of these annoying friends? Right. Um, is that your, in so I, what was <laughs> <laughs> I just think for, the, for an older audience, I mean, if you're trying to appeal to your kids, how somebody, like in a, someone more mature would do it and just be straight up with them and be like, look, you need to, or for, take first word problems, for example, it'd be like, you shouldn't be complaining about that because you know, <laughs> there's people less fortunate than you. Like, no kid's gonna care, Yeah. you know? Like, I mean, you, I'm sure people have told them that, but if you do it to them in a way that appeals to them, yeah. you, get, you get the best of both worlds. You get entertainment factor and you get to spread your message, you know? Right, and you can use the, what's the, what was the half cup, the shut the half cup? Shut the, shut the full cup. Shut the full cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that we try to do, right. that's another thing, we're parent friendly, because that's not a bad word. No, no. It's not a bad <laughs> phrase. No. <laughs> I'm PG. Yeah, you're PG. Yeah. I'm going to use that. There you go. Like, here, shut the full cup. Your kids might start using that for you. Yeah. Then yeah, it's no, another story. story. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, how do you see the creative process? What, what do you mean? Well, so for example, 
I was I, when I look at your videos, <laughs> yep. it seems like there's a lot of creativity and insight that goes into them, right? Uh -huh. You're not just making shit up too much. Like Sometimes, there's something you I mean. see, you probably saw a friend yep. complaining, right? That the Doritos were across the, uh, <laughs> were across the table. Um, so how gotcha. do you get your ideas and then how do you kind of bring them in, in, in a way to, in a creative way? Do you just like sit down in a room with a pen and paper? Like what's your process? For um, I mean, I write every single week. I think that's a very like, uh, it's tough. It's tough. The writing process is harder than anything, harder than the editing, the filming. Um, but yeah, it's basically, for me, it's, it's a lot of times it starts with the message. It's, it's uh, obviously sometimes I post stuff that is just skit based and it's just, you know, for entertainment value, but for me the best videos and the, what I strive for every week is trying to think of a message that hasn't been said, or not, not, not that it hasn't been said, coming up with a message that I want to say and tell it in a different way. Like for example, uh, First World Problems, the way I thought of that one was basically, that was like a big trend, like everybody was saying, oh that's such a First World Problem. Like everybody was saying right. that during, keep in mind this was like back when The Five just came out or something like that. Um, so it was around that era. Uh, so basically, that was a thing, first world problems, and then I had the idea of like how everybody was complaining about how big the 5S or 5 was, and um, from there, I came up with the list of every single like other type of first world right. problem, right. and just put it together in like a PSA format. Right, but like the thing about the Doritos and the chips and the dip, is that just, that just comes into your head? I mean, it's, does it not for you? Like, <laughs> no, but I can't think of, I can't think of that. I don't yeah. think of the, the full cup, shut the full cup. Like those ideas. Okay, that's don't a pun, but like, yeah. yeah. So the solutions was, was in addition to the real, but the real problem, those are all problems we all thought of, but we don't necessarily right. say. Right. But like, it's like, you know, it's like the remote's over there, but I don't feel like getting up, you know? Like, <laughs> it's just real life relatable situations and right. the message, it's, it's just like, it's just, being able to relate, I got guess. It. Yeah, no, I got it, I yeah. got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing you seem to do, um, and you didn't do it in this video, but you do it in a lot of other videos, is you make fun of yourself a lot. Yeah. You cross-dress, you dress up, and you act like a dork. You act in all kinds of crazy ways. Yep. Is that hard for you? <laughs> no, I mean, well, I mean, the cross-dress part is like, I do it because we don't have many f girlfriends that would like to do those parts. Got it. So I just do it. It's, all, it's not because I want to. I mean, Got if it. I could get a girl who's right. you know, an actor and she's willing to be that stupid uh -huh. character, like I would love that, but um, it's just easier and uh, it's not hard to be an idiot. I feel like being an idiot really makes yourself, you know, watching somebody be an idiot, you're like, wow, he's comfortable. Right. So I feel comfortable with him. There's like this connection you have with the viewer that if you're putting yourself out there looking like an idiot, you know, they can relate to you. Because everybody's an idiot. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> because, no, because most people think they gotta show themselves in a certain, you gotta show themselves in a certain way, you know? You it have used to, to be that way. It used to be that way. That's traditional media. Okay, traditional media is you yeah. have to present yourself, CNN, you have to dress nice, all, on the red carpet with yeah, your, you know, now in order. It's, it's all about being relatable. People like that connection. We have a different relationship with our fans than, you know, uh, traditional stars have with theirs. Okay. They're untouchable. And right. there's like positives and negatives to both. But I think for the online world, you have to be connected. Got it. You, know, in a, you have to have a deeper uh, relationship, almost like your friends, basically. Okay. So when you're doing a video, you're not thinking of like, how do I impress them or how do I, how do I like entertain them? You're thinking, what would be exciting for me? Or do you, ha do you no, must I have mean, them in mind? I mean, it's a little bit of both. I think okay. you do want to impress them. They want to see more. Um, but you do, you do treat them like, you, like a friend of mine just, just mentioned this, but you, when we start videos a lot of times we're like, hey guys, like we're talking to them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I feel like a lot of cele celebrities don't talk directly to their right. fans. They don't have right. that uh, same connection. Of course, right. there's some these days that really do that. Like I think Justin Bieber or Selena Gomez, they're all like doing really good jobs with that. Um, but that's why they have such a deeper connection with their fan base. Like that's why their fans are like so loyal. Right, because they, they relate to them. Yeah, right. exactly. So like PewDiePie, right, who has yeah. the god of the uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. um, he does that a lot, right? Where he's like yeah. trying to show himself in a really goofy way and has, people seem to love it. Yeah, I mean, it's his whole channel 
is him playing video games. You know, and it's it's like this is if you don't know the top YouTuber in the world is this guy named PewDiePie who has 42 million viewers or something, and it's it's him playing video games. He he plays video games, and people the reason why he's so successful is because he's just him, and people love who he is and how he reacts and how you know uh, charismatic he is on camera and. Uh, it, that's all it is. That's like the definition of what that relationship is. It's like you can watch, if you can watch somebody play video games, you are a big fan of that person. You know? <laughs> You're not even the one playing, so. <laughs> yeah. But you like to, you, for you it's a different art, no? I mean, it's you don't different. want to just it's have somebody watch you go about your day. Like, right, you put right. a lot of time and attention, and you would say, wouldn't you say that this is your art, is putting together something that gets a message with humor across? Yeah, I mean, I definitely, uh, I mean, having a message is definitely important, and it, it definitely helps, but I think for me, more than anything, I like to uh, do something that's different. Mm -hmm. So saying if it was, for example, I had a message that's basically be nicer to people, because I noticed, you know, I went to like, I saw this scenario where this guy spilt something on somebody at a Starbucks once, and they were just so mad at each other. I was like, how would you react to that? in a different way. How can you be nicer to people that you just don't know? Mm -hmm. So for me, I took a very basic saying and I turned it into treat people like they're dying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like a comedic <laughs> take on it. But I was thinking about it and I was like, well, if that guy looked as if he were dying, say he, you know, he was bald and, you know, or say he had a crutch or something and he spilled coffee on him, he would not yell at that guy, he's dying, right. you know? Right. And really, we're all dying. <laughs> Paul, you're getting serious on us for a moment. But I'm getting deep now. You're getting deep. Yeah, it's, it's the okay. wisdom yeah, coming out. It's wisdom. Okay. You know, 2.0. Um, <laughs> so that inspired a whole video. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's real life situations and trying to think like, I mean, I just couldn't understand how, why? Why were you so, like, what's the difference? You know, like, right. why do you have to treat somebody? So my message was treat people like they're dying. So. The reason, it's, it's not a, anything new. The saying is like, be nicer to people, but it's saying it in a different way that kids would find it either funny or you know, relatable, more relatable. Right. But see, as traditional adults, we tend to think we have to tell them what to do. Right. Be nice. And they see us not I'm always I'm still telling nice. them what to do, but, but you're treat them like they're dying. <laughs> <laughs> but you bring in a humor element that allows them to digest the information indifferently. I, as I see right, it. Right, 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 right. Because you're like, once there's humor, they soften to receive something. Right. And if you're coming in an authoritative way, they, they're too tight to actually hear a message. Exactly, right. exactly. I think I just think for myself a lot of times, it's like if I heard this when I was younger, right. I, all that stuff just goes in one ear, right. out the other one. You know, just like I heard this so many times, I heard this from everybody, teachers, parents, right. uh, even like traditional cartoons and stuff, it's right. just like so, it's not anything new. You like know, to be kind or to be nice. Exactly. Yeah. It's just so like, that's like infant kids. Right. You tell them that. Yeah. And then as they get older, you just have to be more, I think it's about honesty. Okay. Just being real. Just being okay. more honest and uh, yeah, earning that trust. Got it. Kids. Got it. So if we want to get that message across to a younger generation, we need to use humor. Not necessarily how, humor. How I think it's just being really honest. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's not bad. I think a lot of times um, censorship to kids isn't the same as when we were growing up with censorship because of, because of the internet. Kids are not censored at all anymore. They can see yeah, yeah. everything, basically. Uh, so I think when you try and censor them and say things like, oh, be nice to people, like, that's, they don't even see that anymore because yeah. it's just like, it's not censored. You have to be real with them. Right. And if it is a little darker, like treat people like they're dying, it's more relatable to them, honestly. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. No, that's brilliant. That's why. That's that's your wisdom. I didn't know I had <laughs> any. But. When I first, um, <laughs> oh, this is okay to say, but when I first uh, uh, talked to your mom, yeah, because uh, I really wanted Ryan to come here, and uh, I talked to Lucy, his mom, who's here. She said, "Ryan at a wisdom conference." <laughs> I was like. He is freaking brilliant about how he's doing these <laughs> videos. I think if we can just get him on stage, yeah, I think there's wisdom. And I think there's an, a deep understanding and a putting yourself in their shoes that right. as older people like myself, we forget, right? We, we mm -hmm. think we need to tell them what to do. And uh, I think that there's a whole generation of young people out there who are kind of dying or really eager and hungry for things like compassion and things like wisdom, but we're still using this old languaging 
that you found a different way. So for example, when you were hacked, so somebody hacked into your Instagram account, right? And started yep. posting all this crazy shit. And your first, you want to tell what your response was and how you, how, what you ended up doing with that? Well, I mean, I, I don't think it was anything very crazy. I mean, I just made a video about it, just joking about it. And uh, basically, I used that, that whole scenario to show that you can choose to be positive about something or negative about something. And I was just very positive. I was just like, well, now I have to go and unblock all these fan accounts that this person blocked. And now I get to see your, your Instagrams personally, where I would have never done that. So thanks to the hacker, I get to know you guys even better. And guess what? I got, vi I got verified by Instagram finally. So <laughs> thank you. But so you also said, thing. I thought about that person and the pain they must be oh, in. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You said, like, wow, who would spend all this time trying to hack in my account? This person must be in a lot of pain. I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah, it was about, like, you know, I tried to think in the perspective of the hacker. And it was like, I can't even be mad at you because you have to be, like, so upset with your own life that you have to try and make other people unhappy. Right. That was the basic idea right. or thought. Right. And so... A part of this, it also seems to go back to your childhood and your own experience, mm -hmm. if, you don't, if it's okay to talk about it in sure. terms of being bullied, and then how you dealt with being bullied, right. and just understanding what it's like to be the kid who's either bullied or made fun of, because that's all of us at different times, right? Like right. We're, we're the person that's the, the butt of the joke, or we're the person that's um, made fun of. Can you say how, you, how that impacts your work? Well, I mean, that's... Uh, so... That all took place kind of like in middle school, I believe. Uh, basically, I, I, I got bullied a lot in middle school. And for me, I was always like, I'm, I'm a very deep thinker. I always think overthink things. And I was always trying to figure out why. Like, why, did, why is this happening? Because it never happened to me in, in all throughout my elementary school. But when I moved to this school, it was happening you know, left and right. And I was trying to figure out why I kept getting bullied. And I came to the conclusion, like, the reason why I was being made, of, made fun of uh, was to, that he was trying to make other people laugh. Mm -hmm. So actually I used that. That kind of what got me into humor. Up until then, I don't think I ever thought myself to be funny or I ever, you know, I actually used that as like my defense. I used humor to be my defense to that. So when they would make fun of me, I would just go with it and be even funnier than he was. So okay. soon people were laughing with me as opposed to him. Okay. So I think uh, that's- the You felt the bully was making fun of you just to get liked. To get liked from other people. Yeah, yeah. got it. To win that approval. Right. So I, I, it took me a long time to figure that out, that he wasn't tr doing this just to hate me. Right. It was to be cool, basically. Right. right. But if you could find a way to be cool, to, to use that energy to be right. cool, then it would decrease him needing to do that to you. Exactly, yeah. Right. And yeah. so that's how you got into humor. I mean, that's, I, I believe so, yeah. That's yeah. like when I first started getting into it, yeah. yeah. How about those kids out there, since this will be online too, who feel really lonely and isolated and they feel like nobody loves them, they don't know what to do, which is pretty big, right? Like even yeah. the kids who are on, some kids are on social media in a meaningful way, other kids are on social media just because they're bored and they're lonely and they don't feel connected. And right. um, what do you say to those kids out there? Uh, and I know you would probably put a video together <laughs> I, yeah, as your expression, but is there an expression that you would have for those expression? kids? Or is there something you, you would want to say to them now um, who feel that sense of isolation, loneliness, whether they're getting bullied or made fun of? Or I mean, I, I did make a video about that. That's, uh, I did the Draw My Life video, uh, which basically explains everything, the bullies. But the way that I ended it, um, again, it came off a little preachier than I wanted it to be. Uh, but it goes through telling my whole life about from beginning to when I started getting bullied. And I guess the message that I ended with is that happiness is a choice and that this, you know, things are always going to happen to you. Uh, you're going to get bullied. Like, you can't, you can't have expectations to never go through those bad times. And happiness is a choice. And if you truly choose to have happiness, you, you have to put in the effort to get there. You can't just keep feeling sorry for yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. But if I'm a kid and I'm frustrated and I'm feeling lonely and isolated, uh -huh. Do you think they can hear that? Well, oh, I can just choose to be happy. Or do you feel like, what is that? Well, that's why I make videos, because they're a lot easier to explain <laughs> that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I try and think of those like negative responses. But yeah, I mean, it's just the whole beginning part of the video is to show you how negative I was to Got the it. point where I was like about to kill myself kind of thing and, and show you how dark I went 
right. so that when you feel that relatability, like, oh, I'm where he it was, yeah. how is he so okay now? You see that process. So that's why, like I said, the video is a lot easier to, yeah. to just show them that and right. be like, because I thought it out a little bit more. Got it. Yeah, got it. But there was a process, it seems, in that video that you encourage, which is, uh, and I know you might have felt like it came off preachy. I didn't. But there was this sense of this feeling of like, listen, what you, you, can, you can choose what you make of your life, mm -hmm. right? Like, right. you have impact in how your life unfolds. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of people in the younger generation who don't feel seen by their parents, right? They feel like they're pretty much ignored. Right. Uh, and they feel like they don't have real friendships and connections. And there's a sense of kind of, um, not with all the young people, but I think with more and more young people, there's this kind of sense of isolation and loneliness. Right. Uh, and I think they love your videos because it gives them a sense of, like you said, connection to um, a better, like, oh, wow, this person can relate to me. Mm -hmm. um, but since they can't watch your videos, all, and hope that helps them, um, <laughs> but it also seems like we have a culture of really smart young people, but there's also a lot of smart young people who are going through a lot of, like you said, um, bullying or different types of isolation. Right. Uh, and it's hard, you know? I think it's hard. Well, I think it's that. also a different, I mean, I know that it's still happening, but it's also a different time where, like, now if you bully someone, people actually stand up for you a lot more because that's... In a way, there's a, there was a movement where bullying is such a negative thing. Like, mm -hmm. you look at any video of someone getting bullied, there's not one comment about bullying on there. I mean, yeah. not one comment agreeing with the bully yeah. or laughing with the bully or saying right. that that's funny. There's, it's always 100% that, got, that bully got what he deserves or that yeah. bully deserves this. Right. Like, it's, not, it's a different thing, I think. I think it's, it's getting better in a way. Okay. So you're 25 years old. Uh, you have this huge YouTube following. Um, have you thought of what you're going to do when you grow up? <laughs> I mean, you should be time to think about a job, you know, think about what you want to do. Yeah. Um, you ever thought of a career? Like um, <laughs> that's a tough question. I mean, I might just. Is there uh, something next? Are you feeling like you're just grooving with this? Feels like right alignment, or is there something calling you that's stirring that you're that's like? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely still upkeeping what I'm doing and. Uh, I think for me, I, I, always, I obviously want to do, I'm happy because it's not like, people always ask me, oh, do you want to be an actor? Do you want to be a director? But YouTube is such a different thing because I get to do a little bit of everything. I don't, think I'm, I don't think I'm any of those. I think I'm just like a combination of a little bit of everything. So I wouldn't call myself an actor, director, or any of it, editor. Um, I would like to do that, but on a bigger scale, maybe like okay. features. And, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, if that doesn't work out, then I'll start Wisdom 3.0. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Different audience. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> It'll be all your kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they would send them. Yeah. They, were here, they would send them to see the kids. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, so our time is up. I want to thank Ryan for coming from uh, Oh, thank you Vegas for having me. Yeah.